Harry's forthcoming book has alleged that the Prince of Wales attacked him during an argument over his relationship with Meghan. Our royal editor, Camilla Tomney, is joining us alongside Vanessa Feltz, Matthew Wright. Morning. Morning to you all. I've always stayed impartial, <laughs> Camilla. I've always stayed impartial, yes. but because he's never, ever spoken about William, and he's always said, I would never, ever speak about William. And he's spoken about William. Yes. What, 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 says, what, what do you mean by that, though, Josie? Do you, does that make you feel... Bad for William or bad for Harry or both? Well, um, I don't. I do not agree. So Meghan's dad absolutely went to the press, absolutely yeah. stated her, and I, I don't agree with anybody going to the press about family. Now, yes. it, it, this was his brother, and he's always said about William, I'd never ever say what he said. I'd never ever say what he said, and then he's he's brought something that's quite private into the press. But this is the kind of. It's strange, actually. There's an irony about the Thomas Markleization of Harry going on things like 60 Minutes to talk about his family, when that's exactly what Harry and Meghan have, have accused the press of doing, of, of exploiting people, trying to either reconcile <clears throat> or give their side of the story. I think we can appreciate and respect his right to say what he wants and write what he wants. I mean, who can stop him from doing that? But, but we're questioning a... the wisdom of it with regard to whether it can ever put these two brothers back on the path yeah. to being what they once were. And if you look back, i tell you the saddest thing about this is, if you look back at some of the footage of William and Kate's wedding and you see how close they once were, it's actually really, really sad to watch it. So it begs the question, what's Harry hoping to achieve from this? I'm increasingly getting the impression, having watched the Netflix documentary and now this coverage and obviously the book, that, that it doesn't seem enough for the couple for kind of them to win and for love to win. They also seem to want the other royals to lose, right? It's like, we are gonna go off and find our freedom, but in the process, you're left with the conclusion that Harry does want to do serious damage to the monarchy, otherwise he wouldn't be coming out with this stuff. Oh, oh, um, Camilla, it's quite a serious allegation. Can you just explain what Harry actually said? So he says that the um, there was an altercation in 2019 which took place in Nottingham Cottage, which was the couple's accommodation at Kensington Palace before they moved to a bigger home at Frogmore in Windsor. And that Harry confronted William over this idea that he was negative towards Meghan and he said that William had described neg uh, Meghan in negative terms, <coughs> including rude and abrasive, and that Harry disputed that and William got very hot under the collar and grabbed Harry by his collar, broke a necklace and he ended up on the floor breaking the dog bowl on the floor. Then Harry told William to leave. William, he says, later felt contrition and apologised. So they basically had a brotherly fisticuffs in Nottingham Cottage. Um, Kensington Palace aren't commenting, Buckingham Palace aren't commenting. The palace's approach to all of this since Netflix first landed is to say nothing, to, to have that Queen mantra of never complain, never Cox explain. Do the work for them. Well, do you think, I don't know whether to, that was authorised by the palace. Matt, this in, do you think that will continue? Do you yeah, think that... I think that they are trying to maintain a dignified silence because they're not going to provide a running commentary to all these allegations. Sure. And even if one of these sorts of allegations came out of the middle of nowhere, right, if we had got information about, oh, I understand that Charles had a fisticuffs with X, Y or Z, they would say, we're not commenting on this, it's a private matter. But Camilla mm. has lunch with Jeremy Clarkson, so, you know, <clears throat> Jeremy Clarkson... No, but, no, not you, <laughs> Queen Consort. So you think, yes, they had maintained a dignified silence, but let's not be naive, they are briefing people, they do talk to people, that's how royal stories come out. Your sources I, I, are within the royal family. Yeah, so there is a but I, am I, am I not all sources? First of all, not all sources. Not, this is a massive some, misnomer some. that all sources emanate from the palace. The couple had a load of negative publicity after their wedding in May 2018. How many people do you think are agencies to a wedding when it's royal? You've got people involved in every aspect of that wedding that could say anything to any member of the media. Point one. Second of all, what's the suggestion, Matt, that Camilla said to Jeremy Clarkson, I think you should no, you, write you this said, about Meghan? You just said they maintained a I dignified mean, silence. I think it's quite what they naive want to that say. the Queen Consort would meet Jeremy Clarkson, who writes for The Sun, and think that they maintain a dignified silence. But, that would, but, are, you saying, that's a, but that's are you that's saying... That's a bit that, of a leap short. And also, so Jeremy Clarkson doesn't take to... direction from anyone. Do you think Jeremy Clarkson write this article? He wouldn't do it. Am I the only person here who thinks that all of this is so skewed and weird because we're talking now about fisticuffs, you know, a violent altercation, you know, William grabs Harry and rips off his necklace, Harry breaks the dog ball. Oh, my gosh, serious, serious. But think back to everyone's Christmas. You know, <laughs> yeah. as soon as 
you go back home to your family, <laughs> you start to behave like you did when you were 12, 6 and 3. You know you do. Everybody reverts to childhood. How many people, I'm not saying got into a really deep punch up and no. violently attacked relatives, but you know who Families. didn't just ugh, your sister <laughs> over the Christmas thing or, you know, you know, <coughs> grab a present and give a bit of a kick. But then how many you know, people, people put it in a book? Uh. That's what I mean. <laughs> what I'm saying is the fact that it's in a book and the fact that it's got all this very, very serious attention all over the world and will continue to get it, don't you think it makes it seem serious when really it's the kind of thing that in most families like you wouldn't even book. remember. I, I mean, guess... you know, you wouldn't say in, in, in ten years old, remember that time, you know, you pushed me and I but broke then the dog bowl. It's like, oh, come When you're being it. paid $20 million for a book, then you've got to come out with this with stuff. Content. And the publishers want it. And I don't know how this has ended up being leaked because the, the book was under, you know... A, a, close quarters. Nobody was meant to get to it yeah. until it's published next week. But I wouldn't say it's inconvenient to have this <laughs> yeah, <laughs> publicity Absolutely. around a book that the publisher is desperate to sell as many copies as they can of. Uh, we want to play the, the, I guess, the trailer of the new interview that, uh, that Harry did for ITV with Tom Babby Fett. And I'll get your take on this. Take a look. I don't know how staying silent is ever going to make things better. Wouldn't your brother say to you, Harry, how could you do this to me? After everything, after everything we went through, wouldn't that be what he would say? He'd probably say all sorts of different things. Some people will say, you have railed against invasions of your privacy all your life. But they, the accusation will be, here are you invading the privacy of your most nearest and dearest without permission. That'll be the accusation. That'll be the accusation from the people that don't understand or don't want to believe that my family have been briefing the press. If you're invited to the coronation, will you come? There's a lot that can happen between now and then, but... You know, the door is always open, the, the ball is in their court. There's a lot to be discussed, and I really hope that they are willing to sit down and talk about it. Do you still believe in the monarchy? Yes. Do you believe you'll play a part in its future? I don't know. A lot to unpick there. Camilla, wow. what are your thoughts? Well, I'm, I'm pleased that he's being questioned, you know, with proper journalistic integrity, rather than sort of the kind of toe rub, rub that he was given by Oprah Winfrey and others and not asking any interesting questions at all. So fair play to Bradbury, and I look forward to seeing the interview. There's a contradiction in what Harry's saying, because in the book he's saying that he accused his brother of parroting the media about Meghan. But in the same breath, he's saying that his brother and his father authorised the leaking and planting of stories against Meghan. So was the media parroting the leaking and planting of stories? Which came first? You know, if there was negative sentiments towards Meghan behind Palace Gates and this altercation does coincide and does come after this uh, alleged bullying took place and a dossier was given to senior or senior people at the palace. It seems to me that this was a tug of war between brothers over staff complaints and they shared staff <coughs> and some staff said that Harry and Meghan alleged that Harry and Meghan were behaving badly. And I think that the, the crux of all this is that Harry felt that William sided with the staff against his wife, but then don't we all recognise that, and particularly you, mm. Vanessa, you know, because of your agony aunt status, mm. it, it, it can be problematic when wives or husbands marry in Completely. and change the sibling dynamic. Of course right? it can. It almost always is. It almost always is. And you have to tread incredibly carefully not to offend a newly engaged sibling, mm. you know, who brings home their proud trophy, you know, wife to be or husband to be. And you think, what, you? He chose you? God, why? Blimey. Especially, oh God, when you're the, the mother or, or father of the person bringing home the pain, you think, oh God, I, 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 re I breastfed you for this, that you end up marrying, <laughs> marrying them? Oh my God. <laughs> well, no that. <laughs> no, I'm, no, I'm not saying that's exactly how I feel about both my sons. And not, but you know, there are. You know, but you, you know, who is good enough for your son or daughter? Who is good enough for your brother or sister? You know, whenever question, they come in, right. there's an adjustment period where you think. And oh, also, blimey. we know that we know as well from other books and information that there was concern about the speed with which. Harry got together with Meghan yeah. and that William expressed concern about that, but then that was interpreted as a lack of support. Maybe there is a legitimate criticism to say that the Cambridges could have been more welcoming of Meghan, that they were kind of thinking, God, this is going at 100 miles an hour. Families. They <laughs> recognised <laughs> Harry was vulnerable, that he's emotionally vulnerable. He himself has said he carries a great deal of baggage from his mother's death. Um, but after, how we've got to this... After the fight, which mm. I thought the most... Uh, alleged fight after that, the most telling thing of all, which I thought was absolutely extraordinary admission, is that Harry, a war hero, then says after the fight in which William says, come on, hit me back, hit me back, 
and, and Harry says, no, 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 I'm not going to do it. He then gets on the phone and calls his therapist, which I thought was an extraordinary sort of thing for a modern royal to say. And absolutely, from my point of view, as someone who also has to call a therapist when things don't go well, wonderful to hear that there's someone who is vulnerable and who's kind of... It's just one line that we've seen, but he calls a therapist, which but suggests I'm that he's in, called a therapist, in term. Although, again, I would question... We've had Meghan's account that she wasn't helped from a mental health point of view. So if Harry had his therapist on speed dial... Why didn't said therapist help Meghan when she was going through her own yes. internal trauma? Another reformer. thing uh, I think that shocked the nation is the fact that he did put some blame on William and Kate for his Nazi costume at, on the yeah, Halloween so party that he went to. That's appeared in page six, who say, say that they've seen another part of the book, which says that William and Kate saw the uniform and found <clears> it funny. <throat> so he's almost saying, well, the Nazi uniform was their fault. But then this is the most interesting thing. This book is called Spare. And it's about one brother who knows his destiny and another brother that's had to find his way. And yet, throughout this whole thing, particularly with that uniform thing, my reflection was, you, at some point, are going to have to take responsibility for your own actions. Everything can't always be everyone else's fault. Mm -hmm. I totally see there are two sides to this argument, because there always is. But this insistence from the Sussexes that they are always wronged and always right... Doesn't but this goes to me, fair. Camilla. This goes to my question at the start, which is: if if you're never going to hear anything from the palaces, then we're only ever going to get one side of this. Mm. And if yeah. we only get one side of this, what? So, what you so, do so hear I guess. But hang on a second. So where, but things. not, but you know, but not directly. But so, not to be but fair. They don't Matt, address individual stories. They, exactly. Yeah, this right? is the irony here, right? So where if do we go from here? If, as if journalists, if William and Kate want to come and sit down with me or any other royal correspondent and say, right, this is our version of events, we would be getting out our lap, laptops it's and real. lapping it up. It's not like anyone's sitting on anything here. We've said to the palace, are you going to say anything about this? And they've said no. And do you know what? So far, that policy hasn't stood them in bad stead because the polling in this country <clears throat> is not looking good for Harry and Meghan. 44% of people now want them to be stripped of their title. So where do we go from here? Do they come back for the coronation? Well, I think they continue... If they're invited to the coronation... They'll definitely all, come, the, ro they? the royal family's reasonableness in all this makes them seem even more unreasonable as the days go on. So this policy... Probably I just, it's I, the just, right I just one. find the idea that you're sitting thinking the palace aren't briefing against them is just naive in the extreme. I think there's what, a the, relentless what, what? briefing going on, but, whether it's done but, directly or indirectly you, by the Daily Mail, assuming on, Matt, they won't Matt, get Matt, there. Well, maybe I'll just have a moment. People, if people I could just have a moment. make their own minds I've up without being briefed. I've been in the news game for 30 years, and I can assure you the palace does brief against people, as you well know. I'm not saying that the palace doesn't engage so in reactive briefing. they're not maintaining a dignified silence. They're just not saying anything directly. They say it through their agents. You've, re you've referenced the Jeremy telegraph. Clarkson and we could say people watching this show can form an opinion without needing to be briefed by anybody. But opinions are formed by briefs. That's what happens. But I think That's it's very different, though, does. from responding to individual detail. And the thing with, with Meghan and Harry, I think, well, is that the whole kind of Meghan and Harry experience was over such a brief period of time. How many years was it in total? Two and a half or yeah, something? Yeah. You know, from her first appearance to, to them leaving. It was a very, very short time. So they've got to, let's face it, nitpick. They've got to be these tiny details no, no, of who, no, you know, who no, cried... No, wait, wait, wait. But who cried over a bridesmaid dress, you know, who ended up in the dog's bowl, sure. whose necklace broke, you know, who, who made what phone call, who did what. And in the end, you just think, God, if it was any of our families, we could all do it. We could say yeah. what happened with this cousin, that uncle, who didn't say what at this meal, no that wedding, you know, who yeah. got the table nearest to the toilets at the wedding and was terribly <laughs> offended. You know, in every family, there's, there's that. There's always those kinds of details. And what they're not doing, whether they're briefing or not briefing, they're not actually responding to these individual tiny details Precisely. with their own tiny details. Details, Price, aren't they? You know, William's not saying, well, actually, you know, I don't call him Harold. You know, I, it wasn't a dog's sure. bowl, it was a cat's bowl. <laughs> you know, I didn't actually say that. You know, that was something he'd seen in the paper. You know, they're not... Listen, and we weren't having cornflakes, we were having frosties. If you look at the page, I mean, they're, not, they're not doing it that, It doesn't say they? that they blame um, Kate and, and, and William for, the, for the, the outfit. They just said they... The quote is, they found it funny. The headline says that it's something different. So, you know, it's, it's, it's all on... Um, We've um, got to get to a break now. Um, you know can... what to buy William and Kate for Christmas? <laughs> Brand new dog bowl. Oh, no. yes, there <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the Sussexes could release their own range of unbreakable dogs. Any minute now. <laughs> any minute now. I literally I thought we'd just go away. <laughs> yeah. We'd just wrestle it away from Bristol. It's just an idea. Thanks so much, Camilla, for Thank coming you. on. Thank Appreciate you. it.